Do Christians really celebrate Halloween? It may shock you to know that many of them do, and I used to be one of them. So, in this video, we'll discuss the history of this hallowed holiday and discover the top three reasons why Christians celebrate it. Each year on October 31st, Halloween is celebrated all over the world. This time-honored tradition is filled with costumes, candy, ghosts, goblins, and haunted houses. <laughs> During this time, many people decorate their homes in preparation for the big night of trick or treat. Growing up, Halloween was my favorite holiday. I loved everything about it. One time, I even made my own haunted forest and had a blast scaring all my friends. Now, I'm not ashamed to admit that even in the early years of my Christian journey, I continued to celebrate Halloween. Someone may say, well, what's wrong with that? At that time, I didn't know there was anything wrong with it. But then I realized that the Bible I had been professing to believe in told me something different. As I read this for myself, I discovered that Halloween is evil. And if it is evil, why do so many Christians participate in it? Looking back on my own experience, I've come up with three main reasons why Christians celebrate Halloween. The first reason on our list is traditions. The passing on of customs or beliefs from generation to generation is something we all hold near and dear to our hearts. We love traditions. We cherish them and find comfort in them. And this was one reason why I celebrated Halloween as a Christian. I had grown up doing it just as my parents did before me. Halloween was just something we did every year. But where did this tradition come from? It didn't take much time or effort for me to uncover the origins of Halloween. Dating back thousands of years, the roots of this festival can be traced back to Nimrod and Babylonian paganism. Years later, the modern traditions of Halloween as we know it became popularized by the Druids. The Druids were the religious leaders of the ancient Celtic culture who lived in Northwest Europe and Ireland. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, the chief two characteristics of Halloween were the lighting of bonfires and the belief that of all nights of the year, this was the one during which ghosts and witches were most likely to wander abroad. It goes on to say, Around the 1st of November, the Druids held their great autumn festival and lit bonfires in honor of the sun god in thanksgiving for their harvest. It was the Druidic belief that on the eve of this festival, Samhain, Lord of Death, called together the wicked souls that within the past 12 months had been condemned to inhabit the bodies of animals. And in parts of Ireland, the 31st of October was, and still is, the Vigil of Samhain. Interestingly, the Bible describes a situation where the traditions of our ancestors interfere with our relationship with God. For example, upon discovering the evil deeds that his ancestors passed down, the prophet Jeremiah exclaimed, Our fathers have inherited nothing but lies, worthless things in which there is no profit. This also happened during the time of Christ. There was a group of people who professed to believe in God, yet held their own traditions above his word. Jesus confronted them, saying, Isaiah prophesied right about you hypocrites. As it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, teaching as doctrine the traditions of men. You neatly set aside the command of God to maintain your own tradition. These strong words Jesus spoke made me realize that while in and of themselves, most traditions are enjoyable and harmless. Yet, as born-again believers, we must be careful not to allow our traditions to supersede God's commandments. God expects us to repent of our dark past and walk in the light with Him. Which leads us to our next reason why Christians celebrate Halloween, ignorance. Early on in my Christian journey, I didn't really care or think about holidays. I wasn't concerned where they came from or why we celebrated them. I didn't question these things. But as I continued to read the Bible, 
I was shocked to discover that Halloween and many of its customs were rooted in paganism. Take a simple thing like the bonfire, for example. Did you know that our modern word bonfire comes from the two words bone fire? That's right. The ancient pagans lit huge fires and sacrificed their crops, animals, and sometimes even humans, referring to this ritual as the fire of bones. When the fire died down, they would take the embers and place them into carved out turnips, which represented their sacrificial offering. Years later, when the Europeans migrated to America, they brought with them these customs and found that the pumpkin was much larger and useful as a lantern, and thus the jack-o'-lantern as we know it today was born. The ancient pagans also believed that the spirits of the dead would reincarnate themselves into animals, mainly black cats, who were considered to be possessed by evil spirits. In an attempt to ward off these evil spirits, the people would disguise themselves with masks and costumes. Some of the druids would even use their costumes to draw closer to the evil spirits in order to worship them. Because of all the superstitions surrounding these spirits or ghosts, people would set food outside their homes to appease the spirits who were seeking them. If you didn't treat them with something they liked, they might be angry and trick you. And so it was, after I learned about the origins of Halloween, I recognized that I had been living in opposition to God's will for my life. I had been practicing paganism. But how was I to know all these things were wrong? Well, the Bible once again provided the answers. God's Word tells us that by nature we are all sinful and unclean. Because of our rebellion, we have broken God's heart and His law. God's laws or commandments are where we identify what is right or what is wrong. For I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. Now, having understood this, I decided to stop doing what was wrong and begin to do what was right. After all, the scripture reminds us not to be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? And so it was, I found myself in a compromising position, which is the third reason on our list. Compromise. Although I now understood that Halloween was an evil pagan festival, the Christian culture around me didn't seem to care. My friends hosted Halloween parties, my job held costume contests, my relatives watched horror movies, and my neighborhood churches were carving pumpkins and playing trunk or treat. Because of the lack of concern among the mainstream church, I was pulled into a compromising situation and gradually I gave in to the celebration. During this time, I found myself making excuses for my actions. I even watered down some of the elements of Halloween and Christianized them. But it was all in good fun, right? God didn't care if I celebrated Halloween, so long as I wasn't worshiping Satan and my heart was in the right place. I sure was confused about all this. But because the Bible hadn't failed me yet, I ran to it again to find out if God really did care or not. It turns out, the same thing I was going through happened a few times in the past. For example, shortly after the Israelites were delivered from their bondage in Egypt, they gathered and waited to hear from the Lord through Moses. But when Moses' return was delayed, the Israelites became anxious. So Aaron, to give them comfort, fashioned golden idols and set up a festival of his own. Then he announced, Tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. The people got up early the next morning to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings. After this, they celebrated with feasting and drinking, and they indulged in revelry. The people had good intentions and believed their celebration was harmless. But when the Lord saw how quickly they compromised their faith, his anger burned against them. Many years later, God's people did the same thing again. The kingdom of Israel had been split into two separate locations. Rehoboam controlled the south, and Jeroboam controlled the north. Fearing the people would give their allegiance to Rehoboam when they went up to Jerusalem for the festivals, 
Jeroboam instituted his own version of festivals to prevent the people from leaving. He did this all in the name of the Lord. And because of his compromise, the Bible says this became a great sin. In both of these situations, the Israelites chose their own way to celebrate holidays for God. But as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And still, to this very day, Christians continue to compromise the Word of God in numerous celebrations throughout the year, including Halloween. Now, looking back at my own life, I recognize that I was compromising my faith. I was what the Bible calls lukewarm or double-minded. I guess I just wanted to fit in and be accepted by the world. But as I was struggling with this years ago, I began to understand that God desires our whole hearts and He wants us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yet at the same time, our sinful nature desires to be accepted by the world and what it has to offer. There is a choice that must be made. God reminds us not to love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. As Christians, we have been called out of the world system and have been adopted into God's family. Because we are His children, we should obey Him and live according to His will for our lives. We are to depart from our old lifestyle and be set apart unto Him. This is evident throughout the entire Bible. You must not live according to the customs of the nations and do not learn the way of the heathen. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what the pagans choose to do. God teaches us clearly, with regard to your formal way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. At first, this information was unsettling and uncomfortable for me to hear. But after discovering the truth about Halloween and what the Bible had to say, I had no other choice but to humble myself and trust that God had my best interest in mind. I also realized that as Christians, God has provided us with His own set of holidays throughout the year. How wonderful it is to know that we are still able to enjoy fun and exciting holidays with our friends and family in a way that honors God and brings glory to Him. I encourage you to watch our other teachings on this topic, and I pray that celebrating God's holidays according to His calendar will bring you as much joy as it has brought me.